the other thing that's not here in Ben Buck's and Buck Rogers, we have spectacular angel pilots of the talk you know, you know, we don't have all the money in the planet, so you can't get more than 100,000, you can't have 10 million. Um, you can't get more than technology, you can blow me all the technology in government. Uh, they have brought us to an absolutely unique point in that North Dollar Street. When the vehicle gets going, what we will have is 30 to 15 tons into the Earth orbit. Uh, in a payload bay that is 4.8 inches diameter, <coughs> that's just a little bit bigger than the uh, current sort of standard size. Um, you still got a lot of that 30 meters, but actually the logic there is trying to get payloads to squash up a bit because uh, we have a trim problem with the payloads too long to see if you lose too much. You know, we're trying to keep this incentive to pay to squish himself up. What would pay to be? Making a lot of efforts to simplify the interface to make it the B. Payload B can just do its own thing, get it built, turn it up, and pop itself into the payload bay and get it out of that. Because at the moment, what happens is that the payload and the launch vehicle interact and it has to be out of life. So the whole bundle of launch analysis has been structured and the way the two work together. And it costs a few million. Now, if the launch cost is in the order of 100 million or even a few tens of millions, a little million for analysis is not really much an issue. If the Skyline gets down to the level of Hopiful, that sort of million is starting to be in the back of the So we're trying to make it that we can fulfill our goals of cost. We're not messed up by having to create something that our legacy is too much of a group of systems. And of course, of course, you've got your first income, but the advantage, the point of making something that can be useful, is that you get to make things a lot cheaper, get into space smaller than the cost of reaching space. Fundamentally, what is holding back national interest of hope. The problem in the short term is it might not be uh, quite as low as you might uh, wish to What we expect is when it comes into operation, the price of the operators of Skyline will charge will be a little bit below the best that you can come and get. So it will be the cheapest way to will be, but maybe not quite that much. The big difference is that at that price, the whole thing is economic. The person operating the launch vehicle gets in front of the bank's pocket, the person who built Skyline and developed the in gets in front of the bank's pocket, the person who the space in the spaceport gets their money back. So the big difference is not the price that the user is paying for, it's that the price the user is paying is now covering the cost of the launch instead of being about half the cost of the launch and the taxpayer paying for half. So there's a big fundamental change going on in terms of making the space economic, even if there isn't that much change in the price of you. In the longer term, we would expect it to go down. This 10 million we keep uh, a big bang around the years ago, which we know about inflation, but I think we're also finding the way where style on that actually be cheaper than we used before. So like, it's a very rough number, but in the long term, we could still be looking at 10 million dollars for a launch. When we actually talk to people who look like they might be using style on, the first surprise is this actually doesn't bother. Yes, they're quite cheap. I mean, this is the cheapest in the one that you know. But you've got to remember at the moment that people want satellites, they've already got an economic model that works with the price they're currently paying. Their problem is that they spend 300 million on their satellite, about 100 million for the launch, and then they pay much for the rent. There's a money in 50 or 60 charts that the payload can end up at the bottom of the Atlantic or the Pacific or somewhere in the Baltic and not in space. And then the problem is that they're making a satellite, a new launch has to be made, so it's years before you can then get your thing into operation, even if you can't find it. It completely messes up the So every time we get to that launch point, the kind of people who are investing hundreds of millions in, in business plans are taking it from one to 50 because of the launch. So they're far more interested 
even more reliable system. Now, on entry into service, the test flight program would have proven that Skylon could do better than a one in hundred chance of mission success. But the big difference is here is that if you have an abort, you get it back. The <coughs> chances of losing the satellite is something more like one in 20,000 proven uh, by the test flight program. What the real reliability numbers are, it's very difficult to say. It will come out uh, when we build the thing and operate it, and it will change as people get more experience, it will get more and more reliable. And it's sort of like that. So, in the long term, we will probably see levels that are approaching aircraft levels. It's never going to be still air rather than reliability, but it will be something that will probably be quite easily certifiable for uh, public flights. The other thing that, again, is more important to people in the industry uh, than you might imagine is the labor. Because at the moment, it is actually quite a constraint to have to wait and plan the launches three years in advance while you get the launch from the UK. The Skylon is going to be sitting in the hangar, and so even at the start, you should be able to launch from the UK months ago. And if you wanted to, if you set your operation up right, you could probably launch a Skylon. Uh, in just a few hours. Well, a few hours of decision is to walk back and pull it a few hours later into all. So overall what we're doing is we're seeing some of something that can move, getting into space closer, not all the way, but a lot closer to the way we're approaching of air travel. Uh, now we'll see that we coming up with this short term, long term thing. And that actually is described in the requirements spec that has objectives to be achieved when it's in service and objectives to be achieved in mature operation. Now that sort of dual look actually ends up when you keep people thinking that stuff on what they said not real. They then have there are two views on how it might be. We have people in the short term, the people in the car business are people who cannot see space changing in what it is now. They don't want to change satellite and security.
With that upstairs, we can meet the requirements that uh, PISA had for the next generation of the We are just at the end of finishing from the study for PISA on looking at Scarlet, if Scarlet was the next year of the Indian system, what would it do? And obviously, the specification of the place on us is the same as the one that's been used for their own computing of trans, but not upon currently and since. With the um, upper stage, you just find it was useful though, it was 6.4 tons, which is used to transfer transfer orbit, uh, and with just the occasional needed to monitor the research papers up very times, which carry out since they're not good, but then, um, we can actually completely <coughs> capture the market for the specification of this uh, piece. In fact, it's an almost perfect uh, uh, and we really established that uh, what we want to do is to do with the TSE because this work. The database we had, what communications stuff are like doing, where they're going, and not on, we ended up essentially the second thing that each of them are not surprisingly the vehicle is sized and works very well in the home. We were also asked how we launch satellites into uh, the navigation satellite orbits. We don't get the mass on that, but we can do very much of that in the usual stage. And that is heavier than any current navigation satellites. And we've got a nice little uh, capability to uh, get out of the planets. The two numbers there, the small number is down to Jupiter, the large number is down to the moon. Uh, there's lots of assumptions in this, and one thing I'll find is it actually goes to any specific mission. There's normally a couple of tricks you can play to up those numbers, so I wouldn't think necessarily that seriously is far than me. But what they do show is that we can do with this combination what we expect to do with any time. In other words, this is a perfect match for what ESA thinks is going to be up to the Unfortunately, I think it's all disappointing the ESA specification had nothing on human space And uh, uh, I find that somewhat depressing. I mean, basically, the view is that you're moving back in the human space world. But we know we get so strong. We do have an interest in human space flight, so of course we looked at it. We looked at what we can do to go into the International Space Station. Very conveniently, the Space Station program in life extension slips its end data right which is just as well as the program program should be as well. So this is still something I hope will actually happen at some point in the early 2020s. What Scotland produced this space station? Well, you can carry 11 and a half tons. It varies a little depending on where you look from. That's a sort of a little bit. You've got to allow for some attachments in the cases of our rare circuit. So what you can actually carry in terms of a module or a beat or something like that is kind of half times, which is very close to what the space shuttle used to do when it was in the So essentially you could be recovering the capabilities of the uh, shuttle as well as the shuttle mission. If you put a crew come cargo module in the payload bay, um, we can deliver an exchange crew to Sorry, three, four, three, four, and a couple of tons of car. Which is the equivalent really of a soldier's flight, a couple of progress flights and soldier's flight and a basically a crew flight and a logistics flight all in one. But of the same sort of capability that we currently use. And so we are putting on the space station program to uh, service the space station to keep it going. So again, there is a good match between what we currently do in human space flight and what Skylar can provide. So, <coughs> I look at what Skylar does know what I do. But do want to make a point here that Skylar is worked out being a huge amount of detail. I don't think the outside world really understands how much depth of analysis there is in the Skylar. The upper stage has been looked at in more detail now by two separate companies, so the 
lots of working down on the people that these modules I'm going to show you here and associations and stuff, they're concept design. They're things that you do to just explore what sort of capabilities you can get. It doesn't mean that this is a good design, it doesn't mean it's very good, and you might not even know that maybe something that can do to see sort of Nevertheless, uh, this is one of you. Uh, and here I've just said about the proof light and the payload light. But if you just don't go to the ISS, it's going to be a little bit of a task. And uh, if you don't carry too much cargo, you can probably get 54 people in a uh, carriage in the space. One go. Uh, and in case you don't know, that would be another one that we should follow. We would be prepared for, uh, for the sky on the vehicle. Uh, anyway, so that's the sort of thing that we expect. Ready when it comes into an operation and supporting things very high activities. So, the short term people are right. Scalable is the vast achieve a better way of doing what we currently do in space, uh, <coughs> and it will do that job very well and we'll tick in that box and then start considering the long term. Because I guess over the generation in the society, I hope we have a bit more sort of vision about what future space is. We all like to get up there ourselves in some sort of space hotel or something along those lines. So, what does Scarlet look like in that sort of context? Well, one thing that, of course, is an absolute perennial wants and wish list is that you can pass. And the reaction you can see before I join it, so I can say nice things about this. Did this thing called Project Troll, where they looked at using Skylog to support Mission Smart. Uh, and one thing they and I did is they did this with the old Skylog and the C1, so they didn't have quite the same payload capability that we have with the new P1 Skylog. Nevertheless, they uh, built in their scenario a nice big uh, construction hangar, and in that construction hangar, we made six. The only spacecraft that weigh uh, over 700 tons each. Um, there's three of them are cargo uh, spacecraft. They carry landers, they carry uh, Martian base, they carry rovers. I'm not mentioning there, they also carry the public production parts. Um, and so what we're going to start today about going ahead of the King's Road Foundation and they establish the place of Then on the next flight opportunity, the three man craft go, preparing to 18 people, two miles, uh, and then they occupy the base for uh, about the uh, about the year, the two bases. And with the rover and the right side of the bases, they can actually reach 90% of the Martian surface. So this isn't just flight of footprints, this is just in a minimum mission. This is completely not a compromise of plan. Uh, the point of this project is that it showed that the Skyline was all the key crucial point was that this could be supported in the realistic use of the Skyline. And that's the reason for doing something like that. You'll also find on our website a certain power satellite assessment that in general is required a set of papers upon the space station side. And the reason we do have a study is is to future the style. What I think we're all trying to avoid is the situation where in the future somebody wants to do something and they find that the first people got to put something wrong. So we're we, we making sure that the style can be anything that anyone says to do in this case. That's the moment. And of course, the conclusion is. Attached with, and those kind of aircraft that the vehicle includes. 
Again, this is now the stage of the like space in space. It's again a concept design. It's actually done by a guy called Simon Beast, who is a guy who worked in an art project. Um, it's a massive stage, they're a little bit in tons. Uh, and each one of its parts requires 5.2 scholars. Uh, on that dead car space station, supported by two skylines, so it's like two skylines, could relate into the station orbit or lunar orbit about double the tonnage, more than double the tonnage, and we have the eaten or the more than the world can assess. The point there, I think, would be helpful in fact, the skylines of power. Is, is immense. It's an immensely powerful tool, completely changing the capability of the have to put things in space. Overall, on that space station study, we ended up with a scenario of 14 space stations uh, from the Earth orbit out to the lunar surface. So, this scenario we ended up on the lunar uh, base. A total of over 100 people in space. Uh, and uh, that seems to be a lot of part of the tourists in the space itself. Um, and to do that, we would need 340 star plots. So, this is, if you think about this, this is the wildest endpoint of the world. And look how many people, look how many space stations it took in 20 years to build the ISS. It was just about the Everything else. There is a few hooks and scars, a few tweaks 
So we call it uh, spatial human compatible, so you can find human beings. But again, human beings are part of that short term need. So really, it looks as if if you can meet the short term need, particularly this mission here, then all the project drawings and solar power satellites and hundreds of space stations and power will be like that. So, 
He's the best railroad agent on behalf of the railroad. Many railroads have built the best railroad agents, which have now passed us through the running trains, and they have been ripped up and replaced with four foot agents for use with the practice of standard. Now, if you deal with electrical standards, like I mentioned to you on the computer, those you can normally play in dry out and play with because you can put more work on the systems and spread the play with the standards. Not do that for big mechanical places, but you can only have one, and the big heavy engines are not happy with it. So, this is a warning. No, the good of the standard, and, and we are the generation that are doing this, whatever we end up into, a de facto standard will come out if we go to plan on or worse, we'll certainly have that. That is what humanity will be stuck with. Because the hatch is too small. 
small, shows the freeze, it's too heavy, and it's too expensive. So, perhaps not surprisingly, really, when the kinetic could be involved in this, and though this is the you know, technology they know, so they ran into money, went to what they knew, and produced a useless design based on the IDSS technology, and uh, it's too heavy and it's too expensive. So it's not going to look like this side. What it's going to look like, I don't yet know. We've got a lot of work, but I think there's a lot of potential here to do something that really can uh, be something that is light, cheap, works efficiently, and covers everyone's needs. One of the ways it's going to meet everyone's need is to have lots of different flavors. Flavors is what kinetic called being Belgian, because they don't speak English, they're first language, and they're doing a thing that's rather kind of Sometimes they use the word in a way that an English speaker would never use it, but somehow it works. And I think it's what I know they call them flavors, but now they call them flavors. I said, okay, they're kind of getting it So, if you're going to do a communication satellite and you don't want all that fancy stuff about docking laser, then you pull one of those. And that will go pretty much the same thing like a cloud. If you want that docking thing, this is where you're at and you sort of Five to ten kilograms extra, and you end up with a massive conversion. The SOS upper stage was supposed to have this one, an active dock, but I'll pressurize docking one. Unfortunately, at the moment, they're trying to squeeze the design by kinetic one, which is too heavy, so what we've done to get the weight now is kind of be a base in a passive. Scottish across the active document, but uh, I hope that we've got these back to five to go back and have that on the stage. And across the logistics module, the first logistics module, that will all go to Cheshire Island and the hatches in the active document. So, what you do is you get the usage flavour that suits the application of the purpose, but whatever you've done, if you wanted to integrate a satellite, Onto a pressure point, which you never know, it might want something to do. People do, it will be compatible, there is intercompatibility across all the things. So, let's have a look at in action. I'm going to show you now the video of the uh, space station that we built. Um, starts with an unmanned capsule. The capsule then picks up its crew and some logistics, and then it picks up the first space station modules. Model of the rover the the manipulator arm and angular capability to start reading in the <coughs> space. Uh, you then go on to a node module and a power module, and then a habitation module that can't do all the radiation protection in, so the logistics module comes up, which is actually mostly radiation and shielding to go into the hat module, and then there's the EDA and the injection module and the power system module. And then you turn it into something by putting on the bar of now we have a science space station in the beer class, uh, four people, and um, what you I was assume, but notice that all the interconnections there are uses as one for the So the whole thing is built up with uses connections, most of the birthing, some of them don't. If you don't want a science space station, let's say you want a space hotel, then uh, you put different modules on. Now, these are unashamedly uh, sort of inspired by the of aerospace and inflatable modules. And that's an interesting point. If you're making modules, as Mr. Bigelow wants to do, and he wants to sell modules, he needs to have a market. The markets are defined by the standards. Standards are what actually define the markets. If he's made a connection on his module and no one has got that connection, Space, he's not going to sell the modules. The more people have the connection that he's put on his uh, module, the more modules he will sell. And you can imagine people exactly the values of the module could sell all over the place. Uh, the capture of the stock independent black is done. So there's lots of things here. They don't all have to be a monolithically designed space station. You can actually envisage people making bits of space kit. Modules, propulsion stages, servicing robots, capsules, and the market 
for what they produce will be determined by what they can attach to. And the more things they can attach to, the bigger the market, which is that argument for universal power, universality. Uh, go back to that space four, before I hit quality, but of there's a use of stuff on the exchange, which is how it, it, it connects to independence. Now, for the trick here, if you can build that space station, you have those modules, and this stage you can carry anything that slide on and go to this station and put it into geostationary into the orbit, then logically all those modules can be carried by a boot stage and you can rebuild those stations in the geostation or <coughs> And my nice little trick here is because all of those modules have got uses ports on them already as part of their construction process. As it turns out, they are all always there's a port going to the center of gravity, so you can use that same port to the next port. And then, so you can build a geostationary um, space station. Uh, the critical here is a big model for the electronic gizmos to essentially start with the, uh, moving the, the Google servers and the big internet servers into orbit uh, where they operate more efficiently. More security and also that their energy can be cheaper. So if the costs were right, that actually might be a good route for people like Google to be considered. And we can also do one on in lunar orbit, and you see there are food stages sort of doing the job at the sky level and lower level orbit here is being a new uh, just as hard to keep the station going. But what I looked at at this point was to get onto the surface. Um, I decided to try a route whereby you make the lunar base at this station. So the whole base is assembled, got up and running and working in lunar orbit on this lunar orbit station. And then you land it in one position <coughs> as a whole onto the lunar surface. Um, well, now I, this is a, I like this approach to getting back to the moon. Because we know that we can make that. There's no new technology, no risk in not having something that's on the other world. If you go through any sort of lunar surface destruction or the other things, look that they are, you run the risk that you then who are, if you don't have a base, but just operating out of the capture of some sort, a small lander, it doesn't quite work for kicks up to see the job. Here, you have a four man base, all of them know it works. And then you could expand it with all sorts of experimentation about the best way of constructing the world and safety. So there's probably uses here, so points to make more uses. One, there's uses, and because the uses has a hatch big enough to be used in the lunar environment, then you've got easily you can expand that base without inventing the meeting places. Another thing again to sort of show how once you get enough sort of requirements in to do jobs you want to do, it tends to start scoping a wide range of things that you would not expect it to be able to do. These propulsion stages are obviously brought up by food. There's four of them, and there's four food items, one for the one way and other system players. Because it's brought up by food, it will need the user's interface to connect to the food. I assumed that I was going to have to do another interface to take all of those that are walking But I thought I'd just check could I use this in place to do the job. Yeah, easy. It's well within the capability of this, it's just check it off the side and then use this in place. So then, um, we can do we want a new space set, if we want the dreams of the 1950s, then there's two things we need. We haven't got it now because we don't have a transportation. And I hope in my opinion, skip through with some convincing there that Skylon is going to be that transportation system. However, the other thing you need is the interface. The interface is that in any infrastructure that's doing what they're currently doing, needs systems to connect to each other in space. Um, and none of these things are going to happen if there isn't the equivalent of the truth in the It's like making electrical goods. You make an electrical 
runs off 240 volts and 350 volts, your market seems you know, 60 million people, 70 million people. If you make something that runs off a USB port, your market is 7 billion people because that is the universal one across the world. And it always applies. The more universal the interface, the more, the bigger the market is for the things that use it. And therefore, the cheaper and better you get. So if we're going to get this sort of thing, we are going to have to get these interfaces sorted. And so I would ask people who think the short term view to please just be a little bit exceptions of a little bit of change in this interface point because this is going to help them a little bit and then we can buy into it. It's worth a little bit of pain, but it really is as a little bit of pain to get this sort of thing. For long term people, the point is now, we've talked about it for, for more than half a century. With Skyline coming along, it's now time to put up or shut up. It's now time we're going to have to start looking. We're going to have to start looking at the details. We're going to have to start looking realistically at making these things happen. And that means you're going to have to have a little bit of me because I've only been back. Any one of these new activities are going to need to sort out their interfaces. So both people are now going to start sort of just shifting their ground a little bit. The, the, the final message here is that Skyrim isn't just going to happen. There's still, as the same goes, many years slip to its cup and lip, and they're not there yet. And it's not just going to happen. One of the things that really, in my old age, really is annoying is when you get asked to. Journalists ask some public what could, what will space be like in 50 years, and they say a bunch of things, all of which are probably technically possible. Do they get off their butts and make it happen? No. And then 50 years later, you wonder why none of the post of what else happened, because no one did it. So it's going to take people to actually actively support Skyline in the way that the current investors and the people living on the world have. And we need many more of them, a few less people. <coughs> The same is true of the use of this. It's, you know, I hope we're all thinking about what I do. Uh, that's going to happen, isn't it? Well, no, it won't happen if no one gets up their part and makes it happen. And since I'm the one shouting about it, um, we need people to make it happen. And this is why I am moving the action of this form of form. Still going to be working for them in part time, but I need more time and I need independence to try and make and become a reality. So that's that's the magic of why, and I know there's been all sorts of speculation on NASA Space Flight about what the infrastructure project is, and talk of giant space stations and everything. But if only, I'm afraid it's far more boring and embarrassing than just trying to establish a standard uh, that will work across the infrastructure uh, in the way I've just described. Because, as you probably gathered, I passionately believe it's so important to making the future space happen. With that, I say thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>
in uh, transforming states, and there is going to be competition for the capital required to develop these systems. So, could you talk a little bit about the competition from the guys like SpaceX, who are going to, of course, claim that they're a little bit closer, they are required by the industry development, and that they're a little closer to, you know, first nation, first life, whatever you want to call it. And, and whom, uh, or am I overstating the extent to which there's competition? No, um, but the question again is uh, particularly with SpaceX and the competition for SCAR in terms of renewable services. I think the only one uh, that at the moment looks like it's going to be competition in, in an orbital sense is SpaceX, so that's my answer to SpaceX. Um, when I said it will be a little bit below the current best, I meant it will be a little bit below SpaceX. And SpaceX is not truly commercial, it is receiving lots of government money in support of the development of the system. Also, um, and this is just a personal view, I don't see how the weather magic is, I don't quite see how the prices they're quoting on the website come about the system that you see on the website going in price. And they have a piece of magic that means they can get it down to that price. Or it may be that they're relying like hell on the usable uh, stage. Or it may be that their reliability is not what they think it is, which will come back and buy them. So I wish them well. If they succeed, all I think they will do is stimulate the market a bit and it's done on the more most attractive proposition. Um, but without seeing the size of them, I can't, on the outside, I can't see how they will come to it. But it does. Uh, they can be used to just a little bit. Uh, one of the implications of what I was saying is that one of the drivers of the path to the long term uh, exploration was the fact that space agency budgets can move into which was literally a little possible to get into or get increases more of the change in proportion of existing money can be put into the US development or Russian development or whatever. I think so in the uh, post ISS space station stuff, the cost there. Are well below the sort of budgets that the ISS is. Um, so, uh, just to keep the ISS going, uh, it's estimated that the cost of the US, I remember, is five billion. Uh, well, five billion is going to have five science stations and there are four different more than that capability. So, I do think, I think there will be a change in the way things are going. I really can't see the future well enough to say that definite space agencies will wither away or the space agencies will grow or the space agencies will stay where they are. I really can't see the future. I can see options in those futures. Um, but once Skyrim is there, the cost of that and a few changes of approach. The problem that space agencies have is they have to do something new. The whole trip of those space stations or you keep multiply and multiply and build the same modules in you know, production. Uh, let me now elaborate on that a bit because it might not quite answer the question, but I think it points to the world you have to get into. I do not believe the space system is going to be cheap to develop. Uh, if anything, the history of things like aircraft shows that as uh, you use things more, you actually invest more in the development to make them better because you want the efficiency. More than airlines, you think there's huge amounts to get a few percent extra. You can get an airline a lot cheaper to develop. Um, another example of cars, a modern car that you buy will cost, if you do it from scratch, about $8 billion to develop. Where you can develop the car a lot cheaper than that, but you wouldn't sell it against the guy who's invested a billion. So we're going to have to accept that a kit like this is still going to be very expensive to develop. The only way you're going to get the cost is increasing the market for those elements and sell lots of them. Uh, that's why you buy a car that's put into develop for ten thousand pounds. Uh, and that's somehow we're going to do it. And at the moment <coughs> the basic agency culture, because they're essentially research agencies, is they don't repeat build things because that's not developing into technology. And you actually see decisions made on the ISS. 
process when they made decisions to do things a certain way because it was different from the way we've done it before, not because it was the best way to do it. <coughs> uh, diversity of your question. Uh, uh, Regarding the USIS uh, docking um, mechanism, uh, does that standard include uh, standards for connecting power and uh, networks and other things, or is it purely a physical standard? Right. Um, at the moment, the specification does call for a transfer of power of 28 volts, and it does have a provision for a, uh, a data link that's compatible with space space bar on either side of the interface and making a data connection that is compatible with the sort of speed you would need for a space bar to space bar connection. Um, uh, Connecticut come up with some good ideas for some additional power interfaces like uh, a power interface that now due to power up the other guy's uses and control the other guy's uses in case he's a completely dead space what they said about is you may have got a particular spacecraft connected to you, you want to get rid of it, but because it's completely dead, it's clinging on and you can't get rid of it. So we're looking at the radio putting in spaces and power up and getting rid of it. Uh, so it will include that. Whether it will include um, propellant location ports, um, I think it might. There's some of the camping sort of gentle discussions with people. And such a communication satellite people would think, oh, well, the leaf fuel is not actually interesting. Um, but I have a second, if you've got standard for the physical box, you're also going to have to be in the standard for where you put the food. So I think at the end of the day, you see standard will have positions and connection definitions for quite a lot of services. Of course, you don't always put them on, but it will mean that there will be reserved spaces for them. Mark, assuming that we get style on Sunday and that we get 
that would then leave us with something, the processes we would have to go through to do it. I don't see a problem with that, and it is being done, it is being addressed. I mean, we've got to address it early. We can't build something and then try to certify it out. The certification <coughs> is something that's fundamental to the, the whole process of design and how we do the job. I'm all assuming it's not just the CAA, but the JAA, but the FAA. This is presumably a global conversation as opposed yeah. to a British conversation. The, the situation is that, you're right, all these agencies are close buddies of one another to a degree I would not appreciate it. They really are in each other's pockets, in each other's beds, probably. Um, so, um, we, the FAA have a set of rules and agreements for the space tourism, which is this licensing approach. The CAA have been told by all the people wanting to operate in Europe that we do not like the idea of the licensing approach. Um, what the EU uses in the United States do not seem to have appreciated as far as we can work out is the licensing approach absolves the FAA from responsibility for the operation, whereas certification absolves the builder of the building. So long as you follow the rules, basically what the certification does, the society says, if you've done this, you be reasonable. So you take the rules, you follow the rules, and when you're in court because you have accident, you can say you follow the rules. We were reasonable. If you haven't got a certain product, you've got to demonstrate in court that you were reasonable for first principles. And given the likely lawyers on the other side, that's quite difficult. So we think it's in our interest that they are certified. The reason the CAA are doing it is because the British government are very keen on space. They're keen. I never thought I'd say this. The British government are actually visionaries in this field, and they're actually saying, Come on, we want this, we want the kind of benefit of this, CA will get on with it. Because the ASA, the European overall arching one, the new organisation is fighting like mad just to cover its current remit. It's aware of what we're doing, it's, it's sending observers, and the idea is that the CIA work will then follow on at least to a wider European role when they're finished. Because they will know how and they know what they know what the CIA is doing. The CIA Thank you. 
theirs might have been improved. So they've got these little starting points. Okay, right. The question is, how do you know what the liability of starting is before the piece is designed it, and do they quite try to reject We know the liability of carbon We know it's poor. We know huge amounts of money being gone in to make it more reliable and the analysis. The problem you have with an extendable water system is that you can't test it. The first flight, the <coughs> is the first time. If you know your infant mortality curve or your bathtub curve and your rival analysis, you know when a thing is first made, it's a liability of rubbish. That's why you never fly on an aeroplane on the first flight. There's some test pilot goes in. I don't know the stats, but it would not surprise me if one of the aeroplanes would come off the Airbus and Dutch tonight on their first flight with your serious faults where something is rubbish. It's just that the launch vehicle environment, you find out. That doesn't work. We run the test pilot actually took it off the aircraft and controlled the reverse to learn to fly a plane in reverse to be like that. So, so any expendable vehicle, history tells you, cannot be made that well. The reason I have to worry about space sector is because there is parametrics that tell you how much you invest in testing versus the reliability you get out of the system. And one way you can make SpaceX's costs is by not doing the testing that you do the liability. So that's just a suspicion. I don't know. But one way of making their costs is to make an unreliable vehicle because you don't have to invest so much to do it. Then you lose out. Now, Ariane actually tried that, discovered that the market will not accept the low reliability. Skylab, while we've got test points, and what I said was we will prove in the test flight program that it's only 100. It's an aeroplane. It's used many times. It may have a poor reliability on the first flight, but you'll be able to fly it back, correct that, and get to the reliability level um, of a thing at the bottom of the bar after you've done the mortality test. So I don't know what the absolute reliability is. I know what the test flight program will prove, and I think just the logic of the making error of the entire vehicle and the way you test it like that is going to be better than all that. How much better, we don't know. That will be found out in the operational, uh, the operation of the vehicle. And it will also get better as the operation goes on because as you learn how to use the system and you learn where the pipes are, those are the things you fix to increase the reliability. Um, so, so that's the kind of Show you how we probably know our answers. And then how would it compare to the shuffle, which, you know, they had, when they were designing the shuffle and they thought, yeah, great, we're going to do all these things, we can send it off once a week, it'll be brilliant. But obviously that didn't happen, and they had plenty of money to develop something there. Right. Okay, let's look at the shuffle program. This is, this is the next slide I have to get involved. They, the original shuffle was a full of usable vehicle. That's where the scouts and the safety came. They then changed the design, thinking they were still making a reusable vehicle, where they were actually analysing that they making an expendable vehicle, and it has the reliability of an expendable vehicle. Uh, and no matter what money they put into it, they could not change that reliability. It's because it was an expendable vehicle that you cannot test for. When that shuttle stack flies, it's the first flight of that stack. Um, and with the reliability to, to match. The bits that were used actually had the sort of reliability you'd expect from a reusable system. The bits that failed, if you look at it, were all the expendable bits. Um, and even at the time it was being designed, some people realised that the change in configuration to having a section of expendable configuration was going to come up after the uh, safety of the vehicle. So, uh, so if you start seeing extendable bits appear on Skylon, that's the point you start to work. Okay, two more questions. Basically, 